Good day, everyone. Sorry for another set of technical difficulties. And uh, I'm going to talk about MySQL replication advanced features in uh, 20 minutes. And I know it doesn't make sense because you cannot cover MySQL all advanced features in 20 minutes. So it will be some, some that advanced features in hopefully 20 minutes. So uh, first let me ask you, uh, how many of you are using some kind of MySQL replication here? Wonderful, uh, wonderful, right? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, we can't do without that. Now, uh, let's see what kind of replication guys are using. Who here uses the classical MySQL uh, replication here? Okay, now what about MySQL group replication? Uh, what about uh, Galera replication? Oh, wonderful. We have uh, all kind of MySQL replication being mm, presented here. Okay, so let's look uh, before we, uh, at the MySQL uh, replication first and uh, uh, their uh, history of a MySQL replication, really, how that happened and evolved uh, over time, because I think that is a very uh, significant here, and uh, that is uh, always, I think, historical reason is why MySQL replication is so what's the word, messy, complicated? Oh, you have a better word, Simon? No, no, I guess, yeah. Is it started, started fucked and ended it up? <laughs> okay, okay, no, 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 I shouldn't uh, say bad word here, right? Oh, that's actually Belgium, right? You guys are kind of okay, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, you know, that's when I'm speaking to you as I have to make sure it's, uh, you know, follow all the rules to be politically correct, so that's such a relief. I only have to follow less rules here. But anyway, uh, MySQL replication, it started back in uh, 323, right, and that's the first uh, statement rel replication uh, was uh, uh, replicated, uh, which I think f uh, first was similar to like a, a weekend project, right? So it was very, uh, very similar to cover, uh, uh, cover basic things. And then you can see through versions, uh, each, uh, uh, almost each version would be adding uh, a lot of new features, right? And for zero, we had a split uh, uh, IO thread and SQL thread. Then in MySQL 5.1, in addition to statement replication, we added the row replication, mixed replication mode. Uh, in uh, 5.6, uh, we added uh, peer database parallel replication, GTID. In uh, five seven, now we have uh, other kind of parallel uh, replication, multi-source replication. The group replication was added. Uh, I also could uh, add MySQL eight here, but actually now the uh, most improvements they happen in the group replication, which is designed as a plugin. So most uh, changes are also available in both MySQL five seven uh, and uh, and MySQL eight, right? So. That doesn't mean what nothing great and wonderful happened in MySQL replication since 5.7. Uh, well, they just it's in a plugin. Now, besides MySQL replication, we had sort of an alternative track, which existed now also for what, probably uh, uh, close to a decade, is the uh, Galera-based replication, right, which is kind of uh, uh, similar to uh, MySQL replication, but that's a lot uh, uh, all the code base, and uh, yeah, I would call it uh, more uh, mature. And that's available as a patches for MySQL. It's also uh, available uh, for uh, from Percona, Percona SRG cluster, and uh, also in uh, included in MariaDB. Now, when I speak about replication in MariaDB, I think it's important to note what in MariaDB there are a lot of differences, right? So, my, so uh, it's not 100% the same as in MySQL. Right, for example, GTID uh, replication is uh, quite different, right? Uh, it uh, has a different features for, uh, you know, parallel uh, replica replication, right? And uh, 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 we are not going to cover MariaDB features in, in this presentation, right? Just want to uh, get it out. Okay, so what are we going to call advanced MySQL replication? Right, well, uh, actually I'll call advanced everything which is outside of pretty basic MySQL replication, which means, hey, master and a few slaves, and which uh, covers all of those, uh, 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 you know, standard basic features and, uh, and properties. Okay, let's uh, look into what kind of 
choices do you really have with MySQL replication and you can make? The first one is you can choose uh, uh, what kind of, uh, how the data is replicated, right? That can be statement replication, then you actually have, uh, have your queries. You ha can have uh, row replication, then actual rows are being replicated, right? And then you have a mixed replication, which MySQL, it will make its uh, choice uh, how best to replicate this query, and it will use row replications when a query looks as a potentially unsafe to be replicated in the uh, in a statement mode, right? In reality, uh, both those approaches have some, uh, the, you know, performance benefits and other uh, uh, consideration, and that is something what uh, you may wa uh, want to ch to make a, cho a choice for your uh, application. Now, here is another interesting uh, thing: is if you're looking for a raw replication, you also can have a choice to figure out how those row changes are going to be uh, logged. If you look at the best approach, right, really from your data, is when you have a full before image of a row and a full after image of a row, right? Why is that wonderful? Because uh, the, you have a best uh, opportunity to spot the con conflicts or data inconsistency. You can also actually go back then, right? When you have a both before and after image, then you can uh, the, uh, re replay the logs in uh, reverse order and restore your data in, uh, in many cases. But the downside, of course, is what your binary logs and the amount of data you have to replicate is huge. So you can uh, have uh, also two uh, additional options. You can say, hey, I would have a minimal row in uh, image, in which case only change it columns, right, and a uh, uh, primary key to find them, uh, store in a binary log, or you can use no blob, in which case blobs, which are typically the largest parts of your data, are uh, not logged. Now, if you use your row replication, you can say, well, you know what? This, uh, my replication got broken, and all I get is this kind of strange uh, uh, error, and I don't know what query calls it, so I don't know what application corresponds to, and so on and so forth. Then uh, you can also log the query for informational purposes with this uh, bin log row query uh, log uh, events, which is a quite helpful feature for uh, for troubleshooting. Okay. Now, uh, what can you replicate? Now, in uh, in your case, uh, I would say the most simple, uh, practical way to replicate is a full database, right? When you have full database replicated, it is wonderful from troubleshooting standpoint, from uh, operational standpoint. Like you can take a backup. Uh, from one of the nodes and restore that to, uh, uh, to any nodes. But at the same time, MySQL is uh, uh, much more flexible with that. You can both replicate only part of the data, as well you can choose to add uh, additional data to the slaves if you, if you choose to. What kind of filtering do we have? Uh, we have uh, two ways to deal with that, actually. Uh, there are options uh, either on the master itself, you can select uh, what options you can, uh, what data you're going to write in the binary log, right? And you can also filter on the slave and you can uh, choose what data you want to filter. Now, there is uh, some uh, uh, relatively complicated interaction of how those options work exactly depending on whether you use statement replication or row, uh, row replication, right? So, uh, at least mind what the replication filter in MySQL is, uh, is complicated, and I would uh, think where you actually really need to use it. Again, full database replication typically is the most practical. Especially be mindful about filtering on the master, because remember, binary logs are not only used for replication, they're also used for your uh, point in time recovery from backups. Right? So if you don't try to back uh, uh, data in your binary logs, you also use opportunity to do point-in-time recovery uh, using the binary log backups. Okay, the next question is how a position is identified in the MySQL binary log. Right? There are uh, two choices. One is your binary log position, when you pretty much identify that by the file and by, uh, and by position. The challenge with, uh, uh, with this simplicity, right, also comes the challenge that that position is going to be different uh, on your master at one position and on the different slaves, it will correspond to 
potentially very different uh, positions, so failover is complicated and so on and so forth. You can also identify that by uh, GTID, right, which, uh, uh, which kind of handles uh, all of that uh, position, uh, positioning much more uh, fancy, but it's also much more, uh, more complicated. So what is uh, GTID? In MySQL, again, in MariaDB, GTID is, is different. That's one of the biggest differences in the replication. Uh, GTID looks uh, uh, this way, right? You would have uh, the source ID and some transaction ID uh, information. And this value of a GTID for transaction is always prepare, preserved on the slave, right? Even if you have a multi-tiered, very complicated MySQL hierarchy, the uh, GTID of a transaction will be preserved if this transaction goes uh, for a slave. Now, benefits and drawbacks, of course, is what you have an uh, automatic position discovery. You can say, hey, you know what, start replicating, right? Uh, or, or on the slave after you restore backup, for example, it will be able to figure out uh, uh, GTID. You can simplify slave promotion. You can also spot and discover if there are some transactions which have been missing in some cases, but it's also pain in the ass for manual troubleshooting, right? With uh, your uh, position-based stuff, you also can, you have a simple, hey, you know what, there are a few transactions which you can, you know, skip. You have some rows missing, you can always, you know, just manually apply the updates. With GTID, it is, uh, becomes substantially more uh, complicated. Replication topologies. MySQL is now super powerful in terms of what kind of replication topologies you can use, right? You can have a single tier master slide which I already displayed, you can have a replication which is set up bidirectional, you can have any kind of tree, you can have a ring, also called circle replication. You can, but you shouldn't, you know? Uh, MySQL replication is a very, very powerful food gun. It allows you to do many, many things which you should not do, right? Uh, remember that. Uh, and you can also, uh, especially with multi-source replication, you can pretty much set up very fancy directed graphs, right? You can have a fun in and fun out replication. So, uh, oh my gosh, you can, uh, you know, have become very creative to you, for your doom. Okay, mm, so uh, what kind of options do we have for dealing with those more complicated advanced uh, topologies? Logslay updates, that is the uh, most uh, important one, which is also on uh, for, uh, by default in MySQL 8, right? Uh, which allows you actually to have uh, slaves of uh, other slaves. Uh, parallel replication, that is a, a very uh, important feature to keep in mind. Uh, the replication is often limiting performance factor if you don't uh, enable parallel replication. Uh, it's available since uh, five uh, six, but only in five seven you have this logical clock kind of parallel replication, which really allows you a truly parallel replication, even if you have a write uh, going in the single uh, a single database. Okay, uh, standard MySQL replication is asynchronous, right? What that means is what when you do the writes, data persistent on the market, and then it's eventually transferred to the slave and even more eventually is applied to that slave, right? And eventually, hopefully means a few milliseconds, but hey, you know, I have seen uh, the MySQL replication lag of being more than a month in some cases. Anybody else? Yes, yes. So eventually may mean uh, many things, right? And uh, that replication lag is unbound in MySQL replication. There is no, uh, unless you have some external monitoring, MySQL will not complain about having any MySQL replication lag out there, right? And what you also have to know in this case is uh, what uh, with asynchronous replication, if, you, uh, if your master is crashed and lost, some data loss may occur because even that network transfer happens in the background. Now, there is an option for MySQL replication called semi-synchronous replication, which requires a plugin. Uh, and then if you use that, uh, uh, that replication, replication doesn't become synchronous, right? But at least the data would be transferred to the uh, slave synchronously. So if master crashes, then the data loss can be, uh, can be prevented. 
Right. There are uh, a bunch of semi-sync replication options uh, the, which uh, you may uh, or uh, we may want to review. Uh, but in the uh, interest of time and keeping Fred happy, we are not going to go uh, in them in uh, more uh, details. We'll talk in another thing you need to know about master replication. Master replication allow you to set uh, active active master replication, right? In this case, but again. Uh, because it doesn't have any kind of conflict detection and resolution, you should not use active active master, right? You also should use active passive uh, 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 active passive uh, uh, master, right? If you use MySQL uh, uh, group replication or use Galera based solution, it has uh, uh, had it much better in terms of uh, you know preventing or uh, avoiding uh, avoiding conflict. Now there are some people who still absolutely want to use Active Active, you know, because they thought they are have designed the application to uh, avoid content, right? Or they want to make sure they can write to it, you know, two sides at the same time for performance reason, and they don't don't care uh, about uh, about their data. These are probably the same kind of people who run still run my some tables. Uh, right, but uh, anyway, right now, if you want uh, to feel on the risky side, uh, there are some features you should uh, be aware to uh, to reduce amount of conflicts, right? Reduce kind of uh, errors. You can uh, configure those different sides with uh, different after increment offset and after increment increment. And also, there is this uh, fancy slave execution mode, which is it important, which allows uh, uh, MySQL replication to ignore a lot of Data, well, you know, just overwrite conflicting data with no warnings, right? So, uh, if you don't really care about data consistency, you know, uh, then uh, here is a recipe for you. Okay. So, uh, in terms of replication position information, that is another thing that MySQL gives you a lot of choices, right? You can figure out where the data will be stored in terms of uh, uh, position information repository where it's file or table. If you store that in file, then it typically gets a very hard to, uh, to, to synchronize, right, in case of power loss, right? Uh, so uh, we can see in general trend moving that uh, information to the, uh, to the table with, uh, with MySQL 8. Though for the years, that also would come with some, uh, some performance, uh, performance issues. So the MySQL, Master slave replication uh, is uh, the most commonly used uh, variant, right? As we saw, and we had a pool here with a uh, raise of hands, right? So you don't have to just believe me. You can believe yourself. Uh, MySQL group replication, I think, is another, uh, you know, up and, uh, up and coming option, which in my opinion is technologically is much more superior, right? Uh, conceptually to the standard replication, especially in our age of cloud when you want to uh, spend less and less time to manually, uh, uh, you know, m maintain the, uh, the system. Yes. Uh, so what is a group of re replication overview? As I mentioned, that came uh, after mm, Galera replication. Uh, well, that's not official, that's my belief, but that was inspired by Galera ideas and, uh, and its success uh, uh, in the market. Uh, the great thing about that, uh, the group replication, I think, is what it is built on the top of a MySQL standard replication. So you still bin log, GTIDs, right? It doesn't live here kind of on the side. It's available as a plugin for MySQL uh, 5.7 and, uh, and above, and that is uh, considered GA at this point, and that is very actively developed. We can see even in the new releases of MySQL 8, right, every release gets a lot of... Uh, you know, super cool uh, improvements in the group replication. Uh, in terms of difference from MySQL replication, there is uh, no more this kind of master-slave relationship. You can have a group of nodes, right, and, uh, 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 and all the uh, groups kind of know about uh, each other, right, and, uh, and manage uh, as a set, while there is uh, 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 in the full configuration, one of the nodes which is primary is taken writes, and another can be used for reads and for uh, failover. Uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, consistency checks in this case involved, right? So, for example, if node uh, 
uh, lost network connection, right? It will be uh, t removed uh, uh, from a cluster. Cluster itself promotes other nodes uh, to primary, right? So you don't have to have external uh, the external tools to do that, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, and there is. Uh, uh, a lot of work uh, for uh, simplifying failover and so on and so forth. Uh, as I mentioned, for writes, group repl replication uh, configures by default to single primary. You can uh, also configure that in a multi-primary setup, but uh, it's uh, not recommended because there are some features which don't quite uh, work with it uh, yet. Now, what I can see as the limitations in the MySQL group replication then there is uh, no automatic node provisioning, uh, hopefully yet, right? So uh, you still have to make sure the data is somehow magically restored to be the same on the old nodes before you kick it off. Uh, and uh, there is still, you have a manual uh, node recovery in a network failure, right? So if you had uh, some network connection which was kind of disconnected for a few hours, right? A uh, few hours, the node would not rejoin and, uh, and resynchronize that. But I am uh, very happy to say what in uh, the time I did this replication last time, there was also no way to prevent the stale reads from the nodes. Now it was fixed right, in the recent release. So uh, I am glad what uh, the list of my complaints is shrinking. Also, with uh, MySQL group replication, uh, we have uh, MySQL in a DB cluster, right? That is. Uh, kind of more high-level package, which also includes MySQL shell and uh, the MySQL uh, router for, uh, for, traffic, mm, for traffic management. Finally, if you are uh, not using MySQL cluster, right, and still, well, you know what, if I just still use classical MySQL replication, uh, how to make it kind of more robust and uh, uh, less painful, right? There are a few tools. From, come from community which should be aware uh, about. If you are looking to automate your failover, the leading uh, solution right now, I think, is an uh, orchestrator. should know that. If you're looking for read-write splitting, traffic management, with uh, lots of uh, features, you know, again, coming from community, uh, open source, uh, proxy SQL. And if you are uh, looking to get, let's say, some sharding uh, for MySQL, uh, right, the uh, VTS uh, at this point is a leading solution. And that's all I have. Did I keep you happy, Fred? Of course. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you can answer one or two questions. Just repeat them. Yes. OK. Any questions? Any questions? OK. You know. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the question is, in which case you should use Galera replication, should not go to the, uh, to the group replication? Well, uh, I think what you should, may want to uh, evaluate, right, those uh, uh, solutions, what works for you, uh, what doesn't. There are some uh, other differences as well. Uh, in, uh, in my opinion, uh, in uh, generally, the Galera still has an uh, age, in, uh, age in terms of uh, uh, its uh, robustness, right? Obviously, it was around for much more, uh, much more, uh, uh, much more years, right? But I think the group replication is, has been uh, catching up uh, in this regard. Yeah. How many nodes you can have with uh, group replication versus with, uh, with Galera? Well, uh, honestly, uh, I don't know quite uh, if there is a specific limit, right? I mean, typically it goes into the practical limit. No, in group replication, it's nine. In group replication, that's nine, right? But I think, uh, you know, it's unlikely you, uh, you need much more than that, right? But well, thank you. <laughs>